So guys, if you clicked on this video hoping to find out whether liquid was better than foam, you've clicked on the wrong video. You need to click the link in the description that will take you to my liquid versus foam video. That aside, which brand of Minoxidil is best for your facial hair? I'm going to tell you right now, it is the one that fits your budget. That's right, it really doesn't matter which brand of Minoxidil that you buy, it's inconsequential towards your gains because 5% Minoxidil is 5% Minoxidil. So it really doesn't matter. That's the stuff that's actually going to work, the active ingredient, the stuff that's going to make your facial hair grow. All of the other inactive ingredients are pretty much irrelevant. Uh, with a small caveat, obviously, if the packaging of the Minoxidil says that it has Finistride in it, or uh, it has DHT blockers, which will probably be listed in the active ingredients anyway, you want to avoid it. Now, they will list that it has these, so if it doesn't have this on the packaging, then it likely doesn't, if not pretty much guarantee that it doesn't have DHT blockers within it, because these products are designed and marketed for the scalp, so having DHT blockers is a plus point for scalp users, obviously not so good for our facial hair. Hypothetically, it's going to slow down the growth of terminal hair, so we don't want to use brands with DHT blockers in. Good. Okay, that aside, all of those brands, those regular brands like Kirkland, Equate, CVS, Mintop, Tugain, all places like that, um, so they're pretty much exactly the same. And from my observations, the only difference with things like some of the Indian brands is that they're a bit more perfumey, and Tugain, because of its hydrolyzed keratin, can make my facial hair a little bit more sticky, but the 5% Minoxidil is 5% Minoxidil, and 10% Minoxidil is 10% Minoxidil, so it's gonna work exactly the same. In regards to uh, the 5% Minoxidil brands out there, a lot of the retailers that sell them are not gonna be making and manufacturing their own Minoxidil because of you know, costs of setting up a manufacturing base, hiring uh, lab technicians and everyone like that and, and people to actually manufacture it. What they will do is they will just go to a manufacturer who offers a private labeling service and they will say, hey, will you give us some of that Minoxidil that you were selling to the other company, but put our label on it instead? And they'll go, yeah, we'll do that for you. Here's your Minoxidil. And they go, thank you. And then they go and mark up the price and sell it on. And that's how they make a profit, okay? They're going to keep their costs down, but also they're going to be able to get the product out there a lot easier as well. And they don't have to worry about all the logistics of actually manufacturing it. They just have to make sure it gets delivered from the manufacturer to their warehouse, and then they'll obviously sell it on. That's pretty much how they're going to do it, guys. So hopefully that's cleared up a few things for you. Honestly, you can buy any brand, um, and I'm not affiliated with any brands. They wouldn't touch me with a barge pole because I use Minoxidil off label for my facial hair. Um, and so use any brand from any company. It doesn't matter. So guys, hopefully you found that video helpful and somewhat informative. And if you did like that video, please do hit the like button. It really does help out this channel. Also, if you do have any uh, comments, questions, queries, or any suggestions for future videos, then please do comment below. I've been Adam at The Beard Solution. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. And I'll see you guys again next time. You don't rate me because I got a blue tick, but I got one on the top that gave me. I don't even know what's real